This is KGW News at 11. We're going to begin with breaking news tonight of a police shooting in Hazel Dell. This is Highway 99 in the area of Northeast 60, 68th Street, I should say. The Clark County Sheriff's Office says its deputies were involved in this shooting, which happened just before 6 tonight. Multiple agencies are investigating, including Washington State Patrol. There is still a large law enforcement presence tonight. As you can see from this live picture, Washington State Patrol say it is helping handle traffic in areas. The road is blocked off. We'll update you when we learn more. Also, Oregon State Police are taking over an investigation tonight after Salem police were involved in a deadly shooting. Police say a suspect crashed a car at 17th and Center Street and ran into someone's backyard. Officer Andrew Parson chased him, and that's where the confrontation happened. Shots were fired. Officer Parson was shot in the ankle and treated at the scene. The suspect was killed. The officer is now on administrative leave, which is standard policy. Today, Oregon set another record in the coronavirus pandemic. The state reported now 575 new cases, the most in a single day since the pandemic began. And cases have been on the rise recently. And just last Friday, the state reported 550 new cases, which before today was the previous high. This has state health officials urging people to reconsider their holiday plans. That means avoiding traditional trick or treating and not having parties with people outside your household. And it's not just Oregon we're talking about. Southwest Washington has also seen a rise in COVID-19 cases. Clark County has averaged 288 per week over the last month. The largest group impacted continues to be those in their 20s and 30s. Clark County Health says the most likely source of exposure is a household member bringing the virus home. At Peace Health Southwest in Vancouver, the hospital says it currently has 23 beds set aside for patients with COVID-19. 20 of those beds are currently being used. We reached um, uh, a low point uh, in uh, early July, and we were, I think, all hoping that we would stay at that low point, but uh, unfortunately it is uh, appearing to climb and uh, again has reached uh, levels that we, we haven't seen since early in the pandemic. The hospital says it can increase the number of beds set aside should it need to. We have sad news tonight on Mount Hood. A missing climber has been found dead. 27 year old Austin Mishler of Bend had been missing since Monday. Today, Cruz found his body about 9,400 feet up the north side of the mountain. He had reportedly planned to climb in the Elliott Glacier area. The Hood River County Sheriff's Office described him as an experienced climber and guide. Due to the climbing conditions today, Cruz planned to recover his body tomorrow. And we want to bring in Chief Meteorologist Matt Zafino now for a closer look at this part of the mountain and the conditions, Matt. It is a popular climbing area, but it's a difficult climbing route and it's got a lot of exposure on. I'm going to show you a picture of the mountain taken more in the springtime than this time of the year, meaning, oopsie, sorry about that. Wrong picture there that there's a lot more snow on the uh, on the mountain now than there would be or a lot less snow in the mountain now than there was when this picture was taken. But the Elliott Glacier is this area right in here that I'm circling. And the thing about that area, it's very exposed. Uh, some climbers will climb it and, and not even rope up because if you if you rope up on something that's that steep, 50 degrees or so, and you fall, it can be difficult to stop. Um, this climber was climbing so low, we believe. Don't believe there are any other climbers with him. Uh, this time of the year, there's a lot of exposed rock. There's a lot of exposed ice. Some of the ice isn't really all that solid, depending on how the weather has been. Um, we've had a lot of freeze and thaw cycles so far this fall. So again, uh, that's the part of the mountain that he was climbing on the north side of the mountain. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a popular climbing area, but it is uh, it is one that requires a lot of technical skill. So uh, sorry to hear about that uh, situation on Mount Hood today. And that's the Elliott Glacier on the north side of the mountain. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Matt. The Portland Police Bureau canceling all days off in anticipation of post-election protests. Today, Kyle Boshi got an update from the Bureau and other agencies about plans for handling possible unrest. With election day less than a week away and anxiety running high, 
Police are bracing for the unknown. We realize there may be mass gatherings or marches or things of that nature, and uh, we're supportive of that. But uh, what we want to ask is that people don't engage in criminal activity or harmful behavior. Portland Police Chief Chuck Lavelle said local and state law enforcement are still ironing out a plan for possible post-election demonstrations. It's still not clear which agency will take the lead or how many officers are available. Portland police has canceled all days off. So there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle aside from just the uh, kind of boots on the ground law enforcement response. The conflict is nothing new in Portland, which for months has seen nightly protests for racial justice. Portland's police chief said his officers will not use tear gas responding to protests in compliance with the mayor's ban. But Oregon State Police might. And that is a tool and a resource the state police does have. And depending on what the circumstances are or the situation, it is something that the state police have the ability to deploy. Additionally, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office said it'll work to ensure there's no voter intimidation leading up to the election. We don't have an identifiable threat at this time here in Multnomah County directed towards our elections. Regardless of that, we are stepping up visible patrols at ballot drop-off locations and election headquarters to ensure that people feel safe. If something is suspicious related to the election, officials say document what you see, then report it to local elections and law enforcement. Kyle Laboshi, KGW News. And a quick reminder, we have everything you need to know in our voter's guide, from the key races and the ballot measures to the important deadlines you need to know about. You can find it all right now on KGW.com. As for getting your vote in, if you live in Oregon, it is too late at this point to mail your ballot and have it arrive on time. So you're going to have to put it in one of the official drop box locations. You can find the closest one to you. Check out the locator feature on the Secretary of State's website. To count, it must be in by 8 p.m on November 3rd. Now in Washington, you have a, a little more leeway here. Ballots only need to be postmarked by Election Day. So if you're dropping it off in person, again, it is also due by 8 p.m. next Tuesday. New tonight, the quest for justice. The Washington County District Attorney's Office is using grant money from the federal government to start a cold case unit. As our Mike Benner reports, this is giving families of victims a renewed sense of hope. The date was October 17, 1975. Then 25 year old Camille Foss was found shot to death in her car in the southwest corner of the Washington Square parking lot. Sister Adele Bostwick remembers it like it was yesterday. I can recount everything that happened on, on that night. It was just filled with horror and terror and anger and sadness. Sadness because Camille had so much life ahead of her. At the time of her death, she was working at Sears. She left work to go make a deposit at the bank, but she never made it. Somebody killed Camille, who remains a mystery. The case is unsolved. It's very disconcerting, and, and sometimes I feel like we deserted her because, because we, we don't know what happened. For the first time in a long time, Adele is feeling a renewed sense of hope. The Washington County District Attorney's Office received a $470,000 grant from the U.S. Department of Justice's Bureau of Justice Assistance. I believe it's incredibly important for families and for, for the victim, uh, victim's family members. Washington County District Attorney Kevin Barton says the grant money allows his office to hire a detective to look at the county's more than 15 cold homicide cases where there is DNA that may link to a suspect. I would never say that we can solve a particular case because I wouldn't want to promise something we can't deliver. But I will say this, I'm absolutely certain something will come out of this effort. Adele Bostwick sure hopes so. Her sister Camille's murder is about to get a fresh pair of eyes on it. I'm just delighted this is the best news that I've heard in 45 years. Not much can top it, other than news of an arrest in the decades-old case. This person didn't just kill my sister, it eventually killed my mother and father too. We are certainly hoping for the best for Adele Bostwick and her family. It's worth mentioning that in addition to these cold homicide cases with DNA evidence, the detective hired with this grant money will also be looking at sexual assault cases with DNA evidence. I'm Mike Benner for KGW News.